Good morning, and welcome to Kids Site 2, the webpage. I'm Brian. And I'm Pete, and today we are doing a scout skill segment for you. That's right. And today is fire safety. Now, Brian doesn't know a lot about fire safety, do you, Brian? I, I just know that a fire is hot. Yes. Well, it is truly hot, and we would like to tell you about some of the basics of outdoor fire safety. So if you're going out to a barbecue, or you're going out camping, and you have a nice little fire out there that you do the right stuff. Yeah, so if okay. you want to stay warm, if you want to cook some food, if you want to make some s'mores, if you want to sing some camp songs. Did you say s'mores? S'mores. Anyway, you should never make a fire yourself. I mean, that's basically the first rule, is that adult supervision is needed with every fire. So I'm that's going true. to assume that when you are dealing with a fire, that you have adults around you and you don't have to worry about building. Is that a good assumption? That's a very good assumption. The first time that I ever made my own fire was when I was in college and I was still under supervision. It was a one match fire. You only got one match. One you match. Had to make it. I remember you, doing that in Boy Scouts. If you trying. didn't do it, then you had to rub two sticks together and try to make that fire. And let me Ooh. tell you, that takes a long time. It does take a long time. Okay, well, so let's go through some of the basics. Well, so the first thing is there, there's, what, a three-step process of something if you... Okay, well, if you, if you ever uh, get a spark on you or you ever catch fire, the most important thing to remember, and if you remember anything from what we're telling you, I'm sure you've heard this in school, is that uh, if you catch on fire, you do three things. Three Number things. one, stop! And why do you stop? You stop because fire needs two things to grow. One is air and the other is fuel if you catch on fire you are the fuel you are the food for the uh for the, the fire, fire yeah. to grow and it needs but oxygen it needs oxygen it needs air so if you're running you're be giving it more you're air giving it so much air but okay. if you stop then you're not you're at least not feeding it any more air okay what's the second step drop fall to the ground the ground in most cases like is going to be dirt and dirt is not flammable, and that is great. Hey, if it's wet, if it's wet, it's even better. Exactly. And the third step? Roll. Roll. Now, you drop and you roll, and what does that do? It puts stuff right Put against that fire. Put on there. It's smothering that fire. And that it's means it doesn't it have out. any more air, and without air, it suffocates and it dies. And so that's great. So and you want to get rid of that fire. So stop, drop, and roll. Okay, that's an easy that's, first. That's pretty okay. good. So now, so Pete, now, if we're... If we are, um, we're going camping. Let's, yep. let's give you a quick scenario okay, for everybody give me a quick home. scenario. Okay. Yeah. We're going camping. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. Now, the only way to cook our food, obviously, is to have our campfire out yeah. there. Now, how do we decide where we're going to make our campfire? All right. Well, so even if you have adult supervision and the adult is building the fire, you could still give them some quick safety tips about how to build it in the best possible place. First thing is that you want to make sure that it is in a long, clear, flat area that is doesn't have anything that is like any wood in it, doesn't have leaves in it. You have to rake it out. It has to have a floor of uh, dirt, and it's also good to dig a pit. And the reason you want to dig a pit is because that way when the sparks fall out, they're going to fall to that small ring area that you have set off. Also, you want to make a ring of rocks all the way around the outside yeah. or have like a big ring of metal. Sometimes I've seen that done. Now, the ring of rocks, rocks yeah, are not you... flammable. Oh, really? And uh, flammable means, uh, if they're not flammable, that means they cannot catch on fire, okay? And so if you have a ring of rocks, that means that will protect the fire mm. even further from falling uh, out. And you want to make sure that ring of rocks is really far around the, the outside of that uh, fire. So you have the fire set up in the middle in a little ditch, and then you have some dirt, and then you have the rocks, mm. okay? And then maybe one day, if you're lucky, we'll uh, actually teach you how to make... A correct fire, of oh, course, absolutely. only if you have supervision with you, we have to make sure that That's you are being safe because we want to be safe. Now, whenever you make a fire or whenever your guardian makes a fire, uh, you want to make sure you have some fire buckets around. Now, yeah. fire buckets are yeah, metal it? buckets that contain water, and you want to make sure that they're metal because metal is not flammable, so that means it won't catch on fire. A plastic bucket might uh, melt or anything like that. If but, I mean, you, you could use a plastic bucket. Just don't put it next to the fire. Yeah, now, no. you wouldn't want to use, like, this, this bag right here. No, that'd be a big, bag, big mistake. It may be able to hold water, but it may... Can, can we use this to put water no, in? No, no, that's also this, a bad it idea. It wouldn't be... Okay, so wow. you need at least twice as much water present than uh, you would need to put out the fire. Huh. 
And because when you do put out the fire, there's going to be a lot of hot coals and a lot of stuff that goes under uh, yeah, the like, dirt yeah. when, you're, when you're pouring that water on. And you have to make sure that all of those hot coals are out before you leave that fire. Yeah. You do. because It's your responsibility. Even if you don't see a flame, that fire is still going to be it's lit. It's going to be smoldering. Yeah. Now, you know what you also have to make sure to do? Because this is very important. When you're checking for this cleared out area yeah, and you're yeah. looking around for yeah. rocks and everything, the fire, of course, is going to be on the ground. Yep. So why would you have to look up, right? Would there be any reason for you to look up? Um, well, I think if there were low-hanging branches, mm. you have to watch out for anything above that might also catch. Because yeah, because those sparks can fly up, and yeah. then if they hit a leaf... Then you can start a forest fire, and you wouldn't want to have that responsibility, would now, you? Now, that brings me to the next part of uh, the safety talk, which is that never, ever put anything into the fire. Okay, well, you're going to be like, Pete, Wait, what I don't about, want to put what sticks about, and yeah. whatever. And, well, Some if, acorns. If there is someone who is with you who is an adult uh, supervisor, that person is in charge of putting all of the fuel into the fire. If they allow you to do so, they will let you, and they'll give you what they want to put mm -hmm. in. But never ever put anything man-made into a fire. You only want to put fuel that works, that we know works, which would be wood. You know, wood. approved fuel. Um, one of the biggest mistakes I see young campers making... All the time. ...is that they try to put leaves into a fire. They say leaves will burn because we've seen paper burn. Okay. That is such a big mistake. Leaves contain a lot of moisture, which means that they burn slowly. They're also very light, which means that once they start being lit, they'll rise up on the flames, and then they'll fly off. And it's they true. can go fly off into a dry part of the woods and cause a forest fire. I never a good idea. Never a good idea. So never, ever put leaves into the fire. Don't put anything man-made into the fire. And in general, don't put anything into the fire without that fire keeper allowing you to do so. Now, if you are uh, making s'mores, mm. a lot of us like to make mm. s'mores. Delicious. You hold your, hold your uh, fire stick you out there stick and, yeah, and you out. have a uh, marshmallow at the end. If the marshmallow catches on fire or if the stick catches on fire, the proper, way, the proper way to put it out is to blow it out. Yeah. You don't want to wave that stick around. No. Because what if it flies off? Yes. Now, you know, I have a funny story to tell you. What is your funny story? When I was a little bit younger, I was, you know, we went out on this camping trip. Yeah. And uh, there were some campers there that had a stick there. They actually were waving it around. No, that's no good. And, I, uh, tell them not to I know. That. I saw a marshmallow come flying past me. It was a flaming mallow. A flaming mallow? A flaming oh, mallow. That's no good. So that's it, dangerous. It was, it was flying across the air. Yeah. And because I have really quick ninja skills, yeah. I was able to blow it out and eat it just like that. But now, don't ever try that no, because please. you don't have ninja skills. I have, <laughs> I have 13 black belts on oh, under okay. the shirt. <laughs> right. So you got to make sure. Anyway. So that's our preliminary or basic fire safety That's some fire skills. safety for you today. You now, uh, if you are around someone who's making a fire and uh, you just want to make sure that they're going to do it safe and that they're not going to cause harm to themselves, to you, or any of the, the forest or anywhere around you. So yeah. uh, be careful when uh, using fire. It's a wonderful tool, but you have to respect it because otherwise you're going to get burned. Don't get burned. Don't get burned. All right. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Have yourself an excellent day. We will see you tomorrow here on Kids Site 2, the webpage. Bye.